finance industry. And now we'll talk, uh, let's, let's go guys. Now we'll talk about the disruption of the API in the media industry. And uh, as an introduction, uh, we have to say that um, it's not very easy for the, for the media industry to play with the API. Just for, for the record, um, the media industry started uh, in uh, 2010, not before. The first one were uh, the New York Times or the Guardian. Um, and uh, if you look around the world, uh, you have those guys. You maybe have ESPN uh, in the US, Gannett, which is the USA Today. You have uh, Zeit Online uh, in, um, in uh, Germany. Uh, but there are not so many um, mainstream media companies uh, playing with the APIs, and we'll, have, uh, we'll discuss that as well uh, in the talk. Uh, so first, we'll introduce ourselves, because it's always important to know who speaks, who talks about uh, those uh, things. So can you present you briefly what you're doing right now, where, where you're working, what you're doing there, and what you've done before, previously, those of you? Jean -Charles. Okay, uh, my name is Jean-Charles Fallou, uh, I'm CTO at Groupe Les Echos which is the main financial economic uh, newspaper in France. Uh, previously, I was in agriculture. So I changed completely jobs. Uh, that's it. Yeah, Samuel. Hello all. Uh, well, my name is Samuel. I'm working for Le Figaro. Actually, I'm a chief data officer. Um, I won't be long because uh, I understand we separate you uh, from the open bar. So. <laughs> My guess is an introduction should be very short, and I'll say that uh, when I've been called by, by yourself, Julien, to talk here, I say, really, uh, do you want me to talk uh, to API people? And uh, didn't know exactly wh what it means and what you expect from us. So I, I would only say that I'm chief data officer. It means I'm working for Le Figaro, uh, consolidating his data, uh, the producer of the data, the consumer of the data, inside the group and outside of the group. And uh, that's what I'm doing at the moment. So. And that's a point that we've, we've seen before. API is, is probably a new world, but uh, web services and all those things exi existed before. And uh, that's interesting that in the media, it's not for, uh, formally labeled API, but as you, we will see, uh, they are using uh, uh, API. Um, yeah, and, and I'll add something, is that uh, the Figaro is a company who's been built in 1826. And I just want to know if there's anyone in the room talking about API and working in a company that is older than that? Probably no one. Okay. Yeah, maybe uh, to, maybe to, to clarify for the, the non-French people, so Le Figaro Absolutely. will be, sorry for the comparison, but uh, the Times in UK, and uh, Les Echos will be the Financial Times. Um, it, it's, it's fair to say, okay. Uh, so, and uh, myself, I'm a uh, so, uh, founder of Media2, bridging the gap between startups and, uh, and mainstream media, and I've been the uh, VP of uh, CNET in France, so which is CNET, Gamecult, uh, ZDNet, and all the stuff. Uh, so I, I was a publisher before. Um, so we'll, we'll divide the, um, the discussion in uh, two uh, things. The first thing is uh, the, the use of the API on the content side. So it could be uh, intern, uh, internally API, it could be um, uh, open API uh, just for partners, or it could be uh, completely a full-blown full uh, open API for uh, every kind of de developer. And the second part of the talk about um, API as a CRM tool, uh, i.e. how the API are used uh, in front of the paywalls um, for the subscription, and now with the programmatic advertising and the DMPs and all the stuffs arriving on the advertising side, the API, I, API sorry, are, are also used for the, for the advertising part. So let's start by the um, content side. So Jean-Charles at Les Echo, could you tell us uh, how you use the API r right now and how you will be using them in two years or one year? Okay, um, briefly, uh, today in terms of use of API, what we're using mainly is API from social networks, um, authentication, et cetera. It's, not seeing, it's, it's nothing very exalting, um, and we know that we have a lot of progress to do. We have a lot of websites uh, for Groupe Les Echo, and actually today we're spending a lot of time, you know, when you want to put context of content from one site to another, uh, we're usually uh, making servers dialogue uh, between them together. and. Uh, 
the more you add websites or different sites, uh, the more it's going to be complex. So um, we're going to, at uh, around March of this year, we're going to work with a company that's called Oxway. It's on the hall if you want to talk to them. I'm not making any advertisement for them. Um, we chose Axway because um, they have something very interesting, it's very robust, um, and they have a solution that's really open to what we want to do. What we want to do is all the content that we produce on those different websites are going to be pushed on that platform. What we envisage is what we need to put our value is not in the website. It's not in mobile applications. What we want to put value is on the content, on the structure of the content, on the semantic and the data around the content. The keys that will enable us to make the connections with whatever exists on the web, uh, including open data. So we're working and we're putting all our resources in the structure of the content, in the semantic, in the data, and in the keys. And we're putting all that content on the platform API, which is going to be a first POC, will be in March, and we're going to redistribute that content on all the website, mobile applications, et cetera, that we have. And the idea behind that is that the project manager, we only have to deal with APIs like Legos, and we'll concentrate on the interface, on what APIs is going to do, and how to present uh, to uh, the client and what type of business model you're going to develop to it. Okay, so it's a, it's a, f a fundamental shift for us uh, and, and so tomorrow if we need to change app web application or if we need to change mobile application, if we need to change website, it should be very easy for us. If we want to create a new website, new rubric, etc., it should be very easy for us. The value is in the content, not on the product by itself and we should be very agile in terms of creation of new products. And can you tell us, so that's internally, can you tell us a little bit how it will be used with partners or? Okay, so the first phase is internally so that we can make a, 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 the best circulation in terms of content between our websites. Next phase is year 2016 uh, or the end of 2015, which will be you know an uh, interface where if you have uh, external, external companies that have created, for example, a reading system or a reading application, et cetera, that doesn't have any content, it will go to this website, it will pay, like for example, 10 euros uh, for only media com uh, companies or uh, um, information, and we will give you an API, we'll give you uh, the go to, to, to get that via, and you would you know, build your own business around it. So, uh, syndication is something that is the next phase um, and this is something that we're going to explore a lot. And so to move a little bit further, uh, to let uh, any, any developer play with your content and create an uh, editorial product? Well, it's in, in reflection, uh, it's something that uh, we want to explore um, because we think that in terms of Agile, it's, it's going to be, you know, we have ideas, but it's only ideas that we have within the group. And there's a lot of people outside that's had, that have also a lot of beautiful ideas that we can even imagine of. And we should you know, get the best of our, us producing content and getting the best out of those who have ideas in terms of, of interface, of, of business model, etc. So we should explore, yes, that point a lot. But it's not... It's it, 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 culturally speaking, it's yeah. something that's going to be very difficult for a media company, but uh, we know that we have to move on uh, on, on that track. And speaking about the cultural, about the journalists, um, some companies like uh, Rue 89, for example, in Fran which is a French uh, website, um, they, the journalists are starting to code, uh, not, they're not becoming coder, but uh, they are uh, starting to play with the data and uh, things like that, which can provide uh, APIs internally. Is that something that you think the, the journalists will do at the Les Echo, or? Well, it, it won't code directly uh, on, on, on the article, but what we're working on is um, simplifying the access of the API through widget, widget. So the only parameter that they would pass on would be around uh, semantic uh, terms. Um, and in that way, you know, it 
it's not totally coding, but it's using a lot of product that we would be developing with the, with them and helping them use those API that are accessible on the web or that we produce ourselves. Okay, so Samuel and uh, Le Figaro, so, well, first start to say that the strategy can be different, <laughs> maybe. Yes. <laughs> on the editorial uh, side. Newer, maybe. Uh, well, we are, we are pretty new on this. We, it's, it's more like a reflection. What we are doing now, if, if I stick to the editorial part, um, is more using API to contextualize our news. So, for instance, we're using every uh, social media API you can imagine. Um, of, of course, that's what we do. But uh, we want to move further and uh, I think uh, use more API to contextualize, to contextualize news such as for instance, um, when we are talking about real estate, Le Figaro is owning uh, one of the biggest real estate sites here in France. Um, maybe we want to use API to tell you more about uh, the flat and the neighborhood you are looking um, in your um, uh, on our site. For instance, um, what are the prices uh, around the, in the neighborhood? Uh, what are the, the the college that you can find around? Uh, what is uh, the transportation and all. So maybe we need uh, API, more and more API, and we are um, looking for any ideas that you, you would have. I would be happy to discuss it uh, with you guys to um, have a content that is more relevant to our user. Um, so that's the first thing, using API to, for, to enrich the experience on our sites. Uh, the other um, the other way to, to see API for us today is we own, uh, for instance, the La Chaine Météo, which is the weather channel here in France. So we produce a great quality um, uh, weather information. So uh, it could be great to produce an API that um, some of you may uh, want to use because we, we know that 30% uh, of the business is impacted by the weather. So for instance, we were talking about event. Uh, depending on the weather, uh, you have the day of your event. Um, I mean, the, the number of no-show will dramatically be different. So that, that is typically some the kind of service we want to provide tomorrow, not only on um, the, the, the production of content as article, as journalistic uh, content, but also the service that we have, the real estate service, the, the weather service, and um, it's the same. I would love to talk to you uh, about any idea uh, you would have to, to use this content and the way we can create an API for you. Okay, so let's switch on the well, business or C CRM side, let's say. Um, at least Echo, so you have a paywall. So it's, uh, it's a specific uh, business model, which is not exactly the subscription. How do you use the, do you use the APIs uh, for that? <coughs> yes. Um, well, not exactly API. Um, we use a, a external company that's called Ezacus um, that helps us profile clients on the website. And the paywall, we have a two-level paywall, paywall. Today, what we do is uh, is a, a paywall where you have a certain number. So, sorry, maybe precise. What is a paywall? I'm a, not sure. A paywall, is sort of, uh, you know, you're allowed to con to consume or read a certain amount of articles and past that amount. <laughs> You have sort of a, a block where it says when you know if you want to read more, you have to s either subscribe to get some more or either pay. Um, what we need to know today is to adapt the paywall uh, in terms of how the subscriber consumes the information. Uh, so we're using Ezekus to profile our, our clients and know what they do. What we're trying to work today, if you're talking about business model, is sort of adapt in terms of. I have to know what my client is consuming. And if, I, if my client is not only consuming articles, but also buying studies, buying, you know, going to conference uh, through the Group Les Echo, et cetera, sort of have a certain amount of business through that uh, person, we should know about it. And then the paywall should be completely open to that person because we know that maybe it doesn't have any subscription on the content side, but it's buying a lot of sub product on the other side. So in terms of business model, we need to profile and then we need to uh, have an API dialoguing between who the customer is, what is he consuming, and when he's consuming that, how much should we give that person the amount of free articles? So that's on the business side. Okay, uh, on, on the advertising, 
And on the advertising, we're using the uh, Google solution uh, advertisement. So we're linking the ad, ad server to exactly in terms of pro content profiling. So we know exactly who the customer is, what we should serve the customer in terms of his profile. Um, so we're working a lot of you know exchange between those uh, all those platforms that have APIs so that they can dialogue between them. Okay, on the Zeko side. Uh, the Figaro side. Well, for the Figaro, it's um, uh, qu quite different because uh, we are working with uh, an internal uh, DMP. We are working with a, a company called Crux. Uh, it's a United, it's a US company. They um, they provide um, a solution to collect and to gather every data uh, you can imagine on uh, the the audience. So it's basically navigation, uh, transactions. Um, it's uh, whether it is on mobile or on the desktop. So we are gathering uh, all this information and then we are trying to communicate with our first party data provider, for instance, uh, to get more data about uh, our audience. And um, uh, as, as we see, uh, we, we plug it uh, into what we call the DSP. I think you, a lot of you are familiar with that. It's a demand side platform, so we, you can buy your advertising based on the knowledge that Le Figaro can provide you uh, about his audience and uh, also plug it directly into uh, our uh, ad server in order for our advertiser to, to, to target exactly the profile that they are looking for. So uh, I would say API talking on, on, on this uh, side is really for, uh, a con again, um, how can we enrich uh, the knowledge of our um, c customer and audience? And uh, again, how can we provide you with the knowledge that we have so you can develop your own service um, at the end of the day? And uh, I, I would like to state an example. For instance, there is uh, Le Salon Nautique, which is uh, uh, the, the boat uh, show here in Paris in a few days. So uh, we have every people uh, who are looking to the content around uh, the Salon Nautique uh, in a segment. And we can uh, sell that to the Salon Nautique for them to, to sell tickets, for instance, and that, that we've done that, and we also are doing that for uh, um, le, le, le boat, le, it's a guide nautique that is uh, mandatory to have on your boat when you when you sell here in France, and so they want to know who is um, looking at this particular content so they can advertise uh, their book. Okay, and, and last question about the organization of all that and uh, this, this connected, um, uh, all these connecting uh, dots, uh, all the, those dots to be connected. What does it mean internally uh, for you at, at Les Echo, um, between the internal uh, team and outside uh, providers and uh, what does it change? Well, it's culturally speaking, it's a lot of change in the sense that um, where you had teams focalized on website, we're going to sort of reallocate resources uh, on the platform, the API platform, because that's where we want to put the value. Uh, that's, that's the first step. The, the second one is accepting the fact that uh, in terms of a platform, API platform, where you're going to distribute content, all websites are, are going to contribute to that platform. So that means that within the group where you had different teams, you're going to have one organizing the content for all. Um, and that means also in terms of adaptation, the, the, the role of the project manager is not going to be in, you know, how, do, how am I going to produce the content, how am I going to put it on the web and, and you know, you, you focus on focalizing on the, uh, a, um, the interface, etc. It's mainly, I know what I have in stock, I know what in terms of keys I'm going to use to plug as a Lego uh, that type of content is going to be in context with that one, and then we're going to put some social networks there, etc. So everything is going to be, you know, in store. And then what they're going to do is focalize on what product I want to do, how I want to do it, not on the content. So that means in terms of our organization, it's going to be fully, um, you know, um, focalized on the product and a special team that's going to be focalized on the platform. And that in that way, we can go and move on very, you know, very quickly in terms of creating new product, creating, when I mean product, which means either website, mobile applications, um, and syndication, and working with uh, 
companies that do have a lot of ideas and making business deals with them and not you know, trying to see how can I give them that, that content, etc. Same side, Le um, Figuant. Um, well, uh, I would say as a, as a chief data officer, as I said, I have the, the responsibility to plug every producer of the data and every consumer uh, of the data. It's a new it's role, a, by the way. Yeah, it's a new role uh, at Le Figaro for now. It's uh, less than one year. Um, before that, I was working for the advertising company of Le Figaro. Um, and th this new role um, um, relies on uh, this... Um, um, well, w w what we saw into the group is sometimes we have um, what we call a Gollum effect. I mean, everyone wants his data to stay there and they are looking at their data very carefully. And uh, the, the responsibility that, uh, that we have today is to make producer of the data and consumer of the data um, make, uh, make business together and enrich the, the, the relation that they have. So what we decide is that it's a new role as a chief data officer we, and we have uh, a group perspective with uh, data champions in every, um, in every uh, company of the group. So uh, I would say uh, we are now 1.5 thousand uh, employees at Le Figaro with about uh, 10 subsidiaries uh, with different sizes. Um, and in every uh, one of these subsidiaries, there is a data champion, which will be, I guess, the API champion, the one who is supposed to say, okay, this is what we gathered, and this is what we are going, uh, we are going to be able to provide. And so I, I, I completely rely on them, and I would say that uh, as a key point to everyone who, is, uh, who, who will be appointed one day chief data officer in the company, you, you'll have to rely on the people who are producing the data and not to make them uh, feeling afraid about what you are going to do about the data. So it needs to be their project, so as champions, they really understand that. And uh, so we, we had a dramatic uh, uh, impact on the way we use data at Le Figaro in like nine months. And, um, and we are re really happy with that uh, at the moment. And I think the organization point is, is, really, key. It is really key for everyone you know, to, to, to produce um, a, a good data and then make it available for uh, everyone to use, whether it's inside the company or, as I said, outside. And if any one of you have good ideas, I'm always happy to discuss that. Okay, so uh, the beer is, uh, so is, uh <laughs> is uh, up. So d do you have uh, any question for those guys? So maybe uh, I'll come back. I'll come to you. Hello. Um, w when you speak about uh, uh, finding services that you're open to listening to business models or um, uh, or features or opening maybe your uh, your magazine uh, so that we can build upon what you're doing. Um, how big are you thinking? Would it be like, um, uh, would it be a uh, per project? Uh, does it have to be like a really big project to to think about uh, um, integration with your system? Or can it be like startup projects, pilot things we want to try? Uh, if, if you're talking about Lesico, um, I don't think it's, it's uh, relative to the, you know, the, the, if it's a big project or a small project. Um, in, in the six or seven months uh, from now, um, it's going to be something that we have to think about and work with the project you're going to have. Um, sometimes we're going to say yes, sometimes we're going to say no. but. I think that we need to, you know, like Samuel said, we need to work with people extern, you know, f outside of the group because you have ideas that we don't have. You have, you know, certain sort of visions and APIs, content diffusion, etc., needs to help us, you know, get that contact and try to work something out. And so, I mean, it's going to depend on the project and how sensible it's going to be with the, our strategy. And if it's something that, you know, it's completely new and, and you have something that's, that's going to be really, really interesting, I mean, it should be looked at. Is the business model changing of the magazine? It, no, the business model is not going to change 
on the magazine itself. But you're going to have, or we're going to have, to find other type of business model. And that's where you come in. You know, that's where it starts to be interesting. 